Hey guys, what's going on? It is Vito back again with another Beam Derby video. This video is going to be a highly, highly requested video, and it is going to be a how to build video. So before we begin, I will say right off the bat, I'm not going to go in too deep on how to do setups and tunes and that kind of thing. Um, that is more of a thing that you need to do to get your own setups and that kind of thing but I will show you guys briefly how to do it uh, but I'm not gonna go too deep in doing it so I will explain uh, the parts engines transmissions gears tires wheels uh, anything to do with building the car um, there is an engine graph uh, showing you guys which parts on the engines are best um, to use um, I will explain all of the bodies for each car frames um, nine wire options and uh, uh, that we have um, and I will even show you guys how to send cars on discord uh, for those of you that are wanting to do um, online derbies or derby with your friends uh, using Parsec so we're gonna we're gonna get into it right now so I've been seeing a lot of people um, as of late um, especially new people um, they build their cars in the garage um, that's perfectly fine you can do that but I prefer to build them in free roam because um, well quite frankly I've never built a car in the garage mode um, I've always done it in free roam and from what I hear, I don't think you can drive the cars as you build them in the garage mode, but you can drive them as you build them in free roam. So that's why I build my cars in free roam. So we're going to go ahead and click on free roam. And the map that I typically use to build my cars is this one right here, the grid small pure. Uh, there's nothing there, so it loads in fairly fast. So. And as I said that, it loaded in. So, all right, we're going to get right into it, you guys. Um, and, uh, but before we begin this whole process, I will say um, I greatly appreciate you guys' support, uh, especially in that last video. Um, uh, you guys had a lot of good things, uh, or a lot of good uh, discussion, which I really, really enjoy uh, reading your guys' comments. So, if you guys do have any questions, comments, concerns on this video um, about anything that you see here, uh, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, you can leave a comment below on this video. You can message me on Discord. You can message me on my Facebook gaming page. So um, hopefully this video helps you guys out. If it does, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out the description below uh, for all of the patrons that I do support. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. So we're going to get into it. So um, we have the basic Beam D-Series truck. And of course, we're not going to build that thing. So we're going to hit Escape to bring up this menu. You want to go up here to Vehicles. And as you see at the very top, we have some different... RDP vehicles. We have the full frame Imperial. We have the Thunderbird. We have subframers, Cadillacs, GMs. We have Shocker, Mopars, Metric GMs, Crown Vicks, and the W Body Lumina. Uh, we are going to do a Crown Vic in this video. So, as you guys see, I have a few different builds already built. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do that too, um, how to save your builds. It's pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and choose a bone stock Vic. So you want to click on it once, go down here to the bottom right, click this orange button that says replace current, and it loads the vehicle in. So this is a basic build. Bone stock Vic that comes with the RDP mod. 
So, and how to get building is you want to hit escape just like you did to choose a vehicle. Instead of going to vehicles, you want to go to vehicle config, which is right next to it. Click on that, brings up this little menu here. Then, now, um, there are different frames and bodies to some of the vehicles. Like, for example, there are different bodies for the VIX, the OLS, and uh, Buicks. <clears throat> now, there's also different frames you can choose from on a few different vehicles. Um, there are different frames for the VIX, the um, Impalas, um, the subframe Mopars like the 67 Imperial and the 71 uh, uh, New Yorker. You can put subframes in those. Uh, there's different bodies you can choose, uh, like I said. So um, there's that. So um, for the Vic, the Box Vic or the Bubble Vic, because uh, we do have Box Vics and uh, these Bubble Vics here, you can choose from these frames. Uh, for the Lincoln, if you choose the Lincoln, you can choose the actual Lincoln frame, which is an 80 to 83 Lincoln frame, or a box Vic wagon. You can choose a 91 wagon frame. The Impala, you can choose either a 73 or a 74 frame. Um, the 67 Imperial, you can choose the Imperial subframe or Y frame subframe. Um, and then for the Oles, you can choose different two different bodies. You can choose a 74 or a 76. Um, and then the Impala, like I said, you can choose the 73 or 74 frame, but whatever. I'm just repeating myself. But uh, So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and stick with the stock 9802 frame for this video. So, now, <clears throat> the engines. This is the biggest and talked most talked about topic on learning how to build that kind of thing. So we have several different stock options here. We have uh, small block Chevys. We have a 283, 305, or 350. We have uh, some small block Mopar options. We have a 318 LA, 318 Magnum, and a 360. Then you got the big block options. We have a 383 and a 340. And then we have um, some Derby branded engines. Uh, we have the Fab Farm 5.3, we have Fushi Fab and Coke Performance, and of course we have our Ford engines. We have a 302, 351, and a 4.6 liter. So for, for the sake of the video, we are just going to stick with the Chevy 350. Now, um, there is a engine graph out there uh, that shows you like what parts um, are better, what parts are worse. But to be quite honest with you guys, this is totally personal preference. Um, I will go ahead and put the engine graph on the screen now for you guys. So as you see, um, we have different options for blocks, cams, heads, intakes, oil pans, and fans. Um, now the Derby branded engines, for example, like the Fushi Fab, the Fab Farm, and the Coke Performance, uh, you cannot change the cams or the heads. Uh, the cam and heads you can change on the stock engines, like for example the Chevy engines, the Ford engines, and the Mopars. Those you can change the cam and the heads. Um, so I, I will briefly go over this graph uh, for you guys. So the stock block, um, well, there's really nothing good about it, um, but the outlaw block, as you see, um, it has a lot of power, um, not that much cooling, uh, the friction is, is up there, uh, the inertia is pretty low, and ma it has max RPM, but out of all of the blocks, the outlaw has the most oil value, so... The instigator, again, has a lot of power, not that much cooling. It has a, a good amount of durability, least amount of friction, and it has the most inertia out of all of them, and it also has the least amount of fuel efficiency. And it also has a good amount of max RPM. 
Now, if fuel efficiency is a thing for you and you want to maintain that, um, I would not use the instigator. And there are times where you might run out of fuel in this, um, especially if you run online with people. I myself have run out of gas, I think, four times. And uh, derbying for money and you run out of fuel, well, to be quite honest with you, it sucks. So uh, the sandbagger block has the least amount of power, but the most amount of cooling. It has the most amount of durability, friction, uh, least amount of inertia, and the most fuel efficiency. So again, if fuel efficiency, if you're going for that, the sandbagger block might be a good option for you. So the heavy duty block has um, a lot of durability, least amount of friction, and it has a good amount of max RPM. So those are the block options. Um, if you guys want this graph for yourself, it is in the RDP Discord. Um, I will include a link to it in the description. Um, it is in the engines discussion uh, channel, but you may have to scroll up a lot to find it because there has been uh, some discussion in there and again the cam options stock nothing good about it uh, the rogue has the least amount of durability and fuel efficiency but has the most amount of friction and inertia the eliminator has the most power and inertia but the least amount of friction and fuel efficiency champion has the most amount of power durability and friction but least amount of inertia and fuel efficiency so all of the cams have the least amount of fuel efficiency um so there's that uh heads uh airflow has the least amount of power most amount of durability and most oil volume rampage has most power least cooling the airflow has most cooling uh, the Rampage also has least amount of oil volume there. Now, the intake, ha um, both of them, uh, Impact and Crusher, have decent amount of power to them, but uh, the Impact has the most amount of fuel efficiency and least amount of oil volume, where the Crusher has the least amount of fuel efficiency and the most oil volume. Um, oil pans, uh, the Mini has most durability, least oil volume. Ultra has least durability and most oil volume. And the fans, well, to be quite honest with you, I'll be honest, the Ranger fan is the one you want. So there's that. All right. So we're going to get back into it here. With all of that information said about the engine graphs and that kind of thing, we are going to go ahead and build a decent engine here. Um, now, uh, depending on the rule set, um, you may or may not be allowed an engine cradle. So we have three different types or brands of engine cradles here. We have Circle Z and Ski Inc. Those come with the RDP mod. Now, there's another mod out there called LSP. Uh, you can find their mod for free in their Discord. Link to it is in the description. So we are going to go ahead and choose the Ski Inc. cradle because everybody... It is the most common uh, cradle in the derby world, in my opinion. So, uh, oil pan, uh, using our information that we learned on the engine graph, we have this mini, stock, and ultra. We're going to go ahead and put the ultra in because it has the most oil volume in it. So, uh, engine mounts. Um, again, this is personal preference here. Um, a lot of these parts, honestly, are personal preference, but this is how I would do it here. So we, we have aftermarket, stock, and welded. Um, I have never had an issue with the aftermarket engine mounts, to be honest, but like I said, personal preference. Um, heads. We have the airflow, rampage, or stock, and using the, the engine graph, I'm going to go ahead and use the Rampage heads. Now, the uh, uh, ECU, uh, this controls the RPM. This is essentially the rev limiter. So with the stock engines, you don't want to go too high on the rev limit um, or the, the revs or the chip or red line, whatever. 
Uh, but if you're the type of person to where your life motto is red line for a good time, well, throw that thing out the window because that don't matter right now. But if you're the type of person to where you want to limit your engine to a certain RPM, which is a really a good thing, especially in RDP, because if you over rev it, well, you're going to blow your engine. So we're going to go ahead and put in the adjustable race ECU. And I will get into how to mess with that later in the video. Well, in a few moments, I should say. So valve covers don't really matter what, what color it is. We're just going to put the, uh, the classic chrome ones on. Uh, the cams. These are the different cams here. Rogue, Eliminator, Champion. We're going to go ahead and put the Champion in it. Uh, the fans. Toss that stock fan in the trash. Put that Ranger fan on. Engine color really don't matter. My favorite color is lime green, so we're going to put lime green in it. Headers, again, personal preference. Me, I like the, I like these. I call them hogs, so there's that. <laughs> uh, transmission, this is another big one. Uh, this is uh, about as big as the engine topic. Um, we have several different options for the transmission. <clears throat> we have a one speed, which is honestly just first and reverse. Uh, one speed manual, which is kind of the same thing as the one speed, but it's a manual. Um, and I will say right now, I am a true believer in manual transmissions on here because I feel that you can shift the fastest. You can go from first to reverse way faster in a manual than you can in automatic. So use that to how you want. So we have the four speed automatic, which does have park. I do not recommend using this transmission at all. Uh, five speed manual. We have the Fred's transmissions, one speed turbo 400, and a Fred's transmissions, three speed turbo 400. <clears throat> and this is the transmission that I like to use, which is a race three speed manual. And the reason being, you can actually go in and adjust the gear ratios on each gear. So um, I will show you guys that here in a few moments. Um, now, once you pick a transmission, especially a manual, if you do choose a manual, you want to uh, click on transmission and you can choose different flywheels, uh, ultralight, lightened, and the, just a normal flywheel. Um, I always choose the no, just a normal flywheel. Uh, transmission coolers, uh, these honestly, I really don't think they do anything, it's just for looks. So, um, again, we have LSP uh, trans coolers, so it mounts to the cage just like that. So, there's that. Um, intakes. We have three different types, like I said, on the engine graph. So, we have impact, crusher, and stock. And using our information that we learned on the engine graph, I'm going to go ahead, myself, and use the crusher. So... And as you guys can see, right here, we have a basic old school air cleaner. We have a few different types. We have the mini, which is a pretty dinky air cleaner. We have the performance, which is kind of like a, a K&N um, air cleaner. And we have the tower which is kind of like a, uh, what they call like a velocity stack or whatever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I like the performance ones because it, well, to be honest with you, to me, it looks the best. So, um, and here, here are the blocks and using the information that we learned on the engine graph, um, we have the sandbagger outlaw instigator and out, uh, heavy duty. I'm going to go ahead myself. Um, I want fuel efficiency and cooling. So I, myself, am going to choose the Sandbagger series. So now that we have our engine, 
built, you can go ahead and click on engine again and it gets rid of that whole drop down menu garbage. Um, now, um, we're going to get into building the body. Okay, so uh, for fuel tanks, we have fuel tanks provided by Circle Z, so shout out to them. We have four different options. Uh, now, depending on rules, um, some rules actually dictate on how much fuel you can have in your car. Some of them do, some of them, most of them don't. Um, but we have four different options. We have a five gallon, seven and a half, ten, or a twelve. And of course, you always want the most fuel in your car. So go ahead and slap that uh, twelve gallon in there. Now the doors. We have two different options: nine wired or welded. Uh, like I said, uh, this is uh, based on what rules you're running. So uh, you always want welded if it's allowed. We're going to go ahead and weld our doors just like so. Missing a door. Where's the, there it is. All right. Got all the doors welded now. Uh, for the steering column, there's only one option. It's Sky High Steering. Uh, they recently came on with uh, RDP as a sponsor. So shout out to Sky High Steering on that. Window bars. We have four different options. Um, this is, once again, personal preference. Uh, we have the basic uh, two straps. We have an H with the straps. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. There we go. Okay. Uh, window bar number three. This is my personal favorite. And number four is pretty much the same as number one. So we're going to go ahead and use number three. Fenders. We have bolted. Get over here so you guys can see it, maybe. Where is it? Right there it is. Yeah, we have bolted, creased, and the stock. We're going to go ahead and leave it on creased. Go up here and crease that one. Body mounts. This also depends on what rules you're running. Um, most rules allow uh, body mounts to be changed. So we're going to go ahead and put the one inch body mounts in it. Uh, quarters. We have four different options. We have the stock, as you see here, bolted and folded. So it puts bolts in the quarters above the rear wells the wheel wells and the folded part actually folds the very bottom of the quarters up under there just like so crease quarters number one and crease quarters number two which is more of a heavier uh, crease style so now for the uh, the trunk styles you want to click on quarter panels and it brings down another drop down menu and again uh, just like I talked about with the doors nine wired or welded always want to go welded if it's allowed then you were to click on trunk again go here click on this and it gives you four options dist and tucked dist dist with the speaker deck and half dist so I will go through these and show you guys these options here this is the dist and tucked dished dished with the speaker deck and half dished we are going to go ahead and use the dished and then if you click on trunk like this and there you can put in a window bar so now we got our trunk selected we can choose uh, nine wire I'm going to go on this side because that's where the light was better. Um, so now with this, several cars in the RDP mod have different nine wire options, especially from sedans to wagons. Wagons are going to have a lot more options. Um, and some locations are different in other cars. Like, for example, the subframe Imperials, um, they have... Um, they have they all have option number one that goes from the roof 
down to the in front of where their leaf packs are and option number two for nine wire goes from the cage down to the rear sub mount in those so there's option number one and option number two option number two goes from the center of the car down to the middle option number one goes from the top of the car down to right by the rear body mount which helps with bellying so we're going to leave option number one in uh roof signs personal preference i'm not even going to go through it uh paint design th these are uh skins uh seats their seats <laughs> uh cages now uh rdp comes with a four point cage and a seat bar lsp comes with an lsp cage an lsp nationals cage um so we are going to choose the lsp nationals cage and the difference between the four point and the nationals cage is the door bars are stacked and you can actually add a lot a lot a lot of parts to the lsp cage so you can choose different halos all you do is click on cage it brings out a whole drop down menu now all of these parts here that you see below halo the down bars well not the down bars those come with the rdp cage as well but underglow ratchet strap shifter gopro fuel pump pedal switch box and the stick all those come with lsp uh, gas tank protector and down bars come with rdp and lsp so there so we're going to go through these options here we have both front and middle both puts in well both of them actually for the sake of seeing the down bars so down bars go from the cage down to the frame on both of them then you got front and middle the front down bars are located in this area here not sure why you can't see them but normally you can i don't know why i might not have cleared my cache which is recommended that you do often uh, the fr and then the middle is back here, so we're going to choose both. Underglow, not really needed, honestly. Uh, then the ratchet strap goes from the A-pillar down behind the driver's seat. It's These are just uh, for looks. They really don't help, so I'm not even going to go through them. Um, halos, we have different all types of different halos we got the basic uh, square halo number two you just seen it's got the extended just like that number three I call this the Utah style halo because um, you see these a lot in Utah and well out west really uh, number four just like number one, except this crossbar goes all the way out to the side here. Number five is more contoured on the top. Number six, again, a little bit more contoured. And the LSP Halo, which is my personal favorite, is an actual contour. So we're going to stick with that one. So now that we got all of our cage parts and everything situated, we can now this is the this is an option only on the crown vic as of right now um we have different uh core support options they're just painted so we're just going to go ahead and choose the black one um now there's three different radiators 30 inch 28 inch 26 um i like to run the 30 inch and then you can do ratchet straps to hold it in empty uh, rad guards we have if you have the lsp mod you have three if you only have rdp there's two so we're going to go ahead and put the rad guard on there threaded rod in your core support we got different hood options 
We have nine wire bolted, and we even have a caddy hood, which is was made popular <clears throat> uh, by. Uh, I do believe the first people that put the caddy hoods on was Team Derby Sharks at Basher Cash. I might be wrong on that, but they they kind of made it famous. And of course, Dalen Brown had one on his car out at Gold Rush. And to be quite honest with you, it, it just looks badass on Vix. So we're going to put the caddy hood on. Uh, brake line lock, not really needed, so we're just going to skip that. Rear bumpers. We have many, 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 many options on the rear bumpers. So we're going to go through them. Uh, we have the 3x3 three three square tubing, 4x3 slant, uh, 56 inches wide, 4x4 four four homemade. kind of got a point in the middle there. Same with this one. 6x2 tube, which is slanted. Now, this is where we get into the OEM rear bumpers. We have the 75 Monty, then we have the narrowed version, 76 Chevy, and we also have the narrowed version, 76 Malibu, 80s front, and the narrowed version. We also have a Fushi Fab Ford replica, and we also have an angled version of it. SMW, Smith Metalworks, and an angled version. We have the stock Monty angled, which is honestly the bumper that I like to run myself, because Monty bumpers are awesome. We have the na a narrowed and angled version of that, angled version of the 76 Chevy, uh, different narrowed and angled versions of the rest of the bumpers that I just showed you. So, there's that. We're going to keep that bumper on. Again, bumpers, personal preference, you guys. So, so for the front bumper, we have three different options. Of, well, three different groups of options for you. We have factory bumper appearance, which is chrome painted black bumpers are painted black and painted cage color whatever your cage color is is what the bumpers are going to be so in each group uh, they're all the same bumpers of what i'm about to show you so as of right now we have the ever popular super expensive 76 chevy so we're going to go ahead and get up top here and right off the bat we're going to get into the fabricated bumpers we're going to put on the 74, uh, 726 customs, which is just a sick bumper, man. I love that bumper so much. We have the 74 replica, as you see here, 76 replica, the Monty bumper, which is one of my personal favorites. The pointy. These are all 726 bumpers. Now for the Circle Z, we also have a 76 replica. A pointy. Uh, we also have a Larson homemade pointy, which is the exact bumper uh, of the late great uh, Brady Larson, who uh, unfortunately passed away. So RDP added that in. Now we're getting into the OEM front bumpers. We have a loaded 74. We have narrowed and pre-ran. 75 Chrysler Cordova loaded. 75 Volari. 76 Chevy, which just looks awesome with those end caps on it. I love that bumper. And the 76 Monty. 76 Ols, 80s front bumper, a Ford front bumper, and the ever popular Chrysler Pointy. These are the loaded versions of these bumpers. I forgot to say. Then we have the Mopar Flat, 
Cadillac Seville, which to be honest with you guys, um, talking from experience here, these bumpers, the Cadillac Seville bumpers, like, like in real life, these are excellent bumpers to run. So just throwing that out there. Um, so yeah, there's that. We have the Smith Muddleworks Point bumper and the SS bumper. Kind of has a rounded bevel to it. Then we have the stock versions of all of the bumpers I just showed you guys. So we are actually going to put on the Cordova bumper on this one. So the rear frame. Um, you can do different dimple options here. We can do a single or a double. Um, now, I like to do the double, especially if I'm not allowed to run hump plates uh, because it takes stress off of the humps and you are less likely to bend the humps or what we call blowing the humps out. Um, so I like to do the double dimple. But again, depending on what rules you're building cars to or if you're just building cars to just derby, throw hump plates on it. And you can actually see the humps plated right there, which is pretty cool. Front suspension. There's two different options here. We have stock and the scheme plus two. And like I said, depending on the rules, I like to put the skiing plus twos on. Uh, front suspension, got the sway bar, brakes, A-arm straps, welds your A-arms down so that way you got solid suspension up front. You got derby springs, you got several different types. I like to run the adjustable because you can actually alter like the bumper height and stuff like that. Now the wheels, again, total total preference. Um, you got Astro Van, D50s, Dodge 10 slots, Dodge SS, which is the Dodge Van wheels. I, and to be honest with you, I hate those wheels with a passion. I think they're ugly, but to each their own. Uh, we got F-150, GM Rally, LSP wheels, Mazdas. Mazdas look pretty sick, not going to lie. We got Dodge Monteros, Mopar Steels, Nissans, Pathfinders, Buick, or Pontiac Rallies, excuse me, Ranger D-hole rims. We got solids. We got SS's, stock, teardrops. I like to run teardrops, or they're more commonly known as saw blades. So we're going to put those on. Uh, tires, we have several different types of tires. Uh, you can run uh, your factory radial tires. Um, we got BKT, skid steers. These are also the same as the back, you guys. So I'll keep that in mind. You got galaxies, your basic skid steers. You got V-treads. And same for these, except you got fork lifts, kind of look like a 550 almost. Then you got curb kickers, which are my personal favorite. And you got straight treads, which are like trailer tires. And the same goes for the 26 inch, 27s. Except the 27s, we have the mud tires. And then we also have the actual 550 BKTs and 700 BKTs, which are insanely huge. They jack that front bumper height up. So we're going to go ahead and put the 550s on. Oh, I forgot to. Yep. Okay, so we have three different types of steering. Uh, reinforced, of course, is better than stock. LSP is the same as reinforced, so we're just going to go ahead and put reinforced in. Uh, you also have the option to put in power steering, so we're going to put in power steering. Rear suspension, um, I'm actually going to make 
the body disappear so we can see it a lot better. So let's go. All right. So now we can see the rear diff. We have, as you see, we have toast ink rear ends. We have blue, green, orange, and red. No difference in between them. We also have the LSP braced 14 bolt. And we also have a home brace 9 inch and your stock 88 this is in the vix so there's different versions of 10 bolts and the gms and that kind of thing uh you can also put leafs on these cars if it's coil sprung you can put leafs on so again we have the same options as that and then we're we're just going to put in the toast ink uh green rear end because, well, my favorite color is green. Uh, drive shafts. NLR drive shafts. Blue, green, orange, red, yellow, and stock. They're just all different color. Personal preference. We're just going to leave the black one on. Uh, rear shocks. You got race, rear, sport. Um, the race shocks. You have more options on like dampening and stiffness. That kind of thing. Uh, trailing arms, same thing as rear end, uh, different colors, or you can do the unpainted. We're going to go ahead and throw the green ones on, as you see here. Uh, rear differential. <clears throat> this is a, uh, this is a to uh, very popular topic, again, um, on gear ratios. We have welded and open. Always want to go uh, welded. So what I recommend doing, uh, this is just me and the way that I like to do it is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I like to do the race adjustable because then I can actually go into the rear uh, gears just like the transmission gear as I mentioned earlier. Um, and you can actually adjust um what gear you want to run so so rear springs again different options here we got solid i'm going to make the body appear again there we go we got solids and as you see it made that back end go down the nose is way jacked up so rear tires same thing as the front um, I like to run either 23s or solids, the smallest tire possible. Uh, rear spindles don't really matter. Um, so there's that. So um, talking about plates earlier and the hump plates, um, the stock frames, you can't do this, but I will show you guys this. Seam welded and tilted frames. So it introduces different plate options. It introduces different plate options. So your bumper bracket plate goes between your bumper and the A-arms. You have a 10 inch uh, cider top, 14 inch cider top, six inch cider top or am to bumper we're going to put in the am to bumper and it goes right there kickers go from the dash bar here i will make the body disappear again it goes from the dash bar to the back of the a-arms just like that and the plate behind the a-arms is in this section here you got one goes right underneath the kicker two behind the kicker and three right on the little tab there on vic frames now uh those the the plate behind the a-arms the location on those vary on which car you run because each of them is in different uh positions but those are the positions that are on the vix so um now since I switched frames, I have to go back in, put in ski spindles, and you can actually 
put in different A arms, 80s. A, a arms are the best in my opinion. Put in a sway bar. All right, so now we have our car built. Actually, I'm going to put a different front bumper on it. Sorry, guys. Put the Dover bumper. All right, now that we have our car built, nose is jacked up, ass ends on the ground, excuse me, back end. Now we get to do the fun part. We get to go into tuning. And like I said, I'm not going to go too deep with it. Um, so the bumper the rear bumper <clears throat> you can decide on what height how high you want the bumper so we're going to take it all the way to the left and it lowers it all the way to the right makes it go higher the length all the way to the left makes it go in towards the car all the way to the right makes it go out just like that so I like to have my bumpers high and in, just like that. So, force feedback, don't really matter, don't really have to mess with it. The rear gear, <clears throat> this is where the um, alternating of your um, transmission gearing and your rear gear come into play. Um, that is usually the last thing that I mess with. So we're going to get to that last, uh, the dimple depth, uh, the dimple depth for the, this bottom one here is right behind about right in here. The second dimple is about right in here underneath this big rectangular hole. So this is totally up to you guys. So, um, and as it says right here, the lower the percentage, the deeper dimple. So the deepest dimple that you can put in is 25%. And 100% is pretty much just barely any dimple. So what I like to do myself is I like to do anywhere from about 70 to 85% for the behind the bumper. So we're going to do 75 and then the second dimple, I go anywhere from 95 to 100. So we're going to do 95% on that one. Now, this is where the adjustable race ECU comes in. <clears throat> the oil volume, you want to make sure that's all the way to the right. Uh, you get the most uh, fuel there. Now, this is where the uh, adjustable race ECU comes in. Um, RPM limit cut time, so how fast the rev limiter cycles, which means how much it bounces, you know, like those annoying Hondas, you know, how they they bounce off the rev limiter, and they're like, wah, bah, 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 you know, that is what that is, the cut time. So if you want that repetitive popping sound, you want to jack it all the way to the right, if you don't want that, if you just wanted a constant rev all the way to the left, that's what I do. So um, now the rev limit. Now, now that we have a stock engine, I recommend going no, nothing over 6,200 RPMs um, or 65, I think stock engines can do without doing the over rev uh, risk or whatever. But... The Derby branded engines like the Fushi Fab, the Coke Performance, the Fab Farm 5.3, uh, those can go over um, 65. Um, the Fushi Fab, I recommend not going over anything over 7,500. The Coke Performance, the 358, um, I recommend doing about 72 to 75. Now the Coke LS, red lines at 8,000. No matter if you put it to 10,000, whatever, it redlines at 8, and it'll stay there as long as you don't pop your rad or whatever. It'll stay there all heat long. So there's that. So we're going to go ahead and choose what I would do for the stock engine. I would do 6,300. Now, um, if you have a cradle in your car, this is for the 
pressurizing of the cradle to the firewall. Now, this is where a lot of people mess up. Uh, a brief explanation on this is how much pressure you put on the firewall with your cradle. Um, the point behind this is to help keep your nose down, makes your nose pretty stiff, makes it last a whole lot longer. So, um, also this varies on which car you run. Um, this is just my opinion on the VIX. You don't really have to go all that high, but the old iron, I, bare minimum, I go about halfway. So about, about right in here with the old iron point or one L or point one point oh two. man, I can't talk now. So, but with the VIX, I go about 1.01 .01, somewhere in there. So that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, the front <clears throat> now the stiffness if you jack it all the way up it, it'll lower the height so we want to keep it about right in there because remember we have a-arm straps in uh, spring height if it's allowed you want to jack that all the way up dampening that's up to you uh, rear dampening rebound spring height want to put it about right in about 1.16 and then trailing arm length it'll um, lengthen or shorten the trailing arms again that, that's totally personal preference I like to run mine as short as possible now this is where the three-speed race manual transmission comes in you can actually adjust your first second third and reverse gear so um, the automatics, you don't have to do this, but the rate, this is for only the race manual transmission. So, uh, now this will change from, this should change from running Fords or, uh, smaller cars like the VIX, uh, the metric GM, T-Bird, um, I'm trying to think of a, uh, another smaller car that the RDP has, but, but yeah. Uh, but the big old iron, like Roundbacks, Imperials, um, old, uh, the Impalas, um, it, you know, subframers, um, most of the time your VIX setups aren't going to work in your big old iron. So what I personally like to run my VIX at is anywhere from about 3.5 to about 3.75 so we are going to put the first gear at 3.55 second gear I like to do anywhere from about 2.9 to about 3.15 so we're actually gonna just gonna put it on three now third gear I like to have it anywhere from about 2 to 2.25. So we are going to put it at 2.2 just for sake of the video. And then reverse. I normally don't mess with it. So now wheel alignment. As you see, them wheels are pigeon toed or caddy wampus or whatever you want to call it. Normally, what I do on the VIX. Is just take them all the way to the right each one now the wheel pressure tire pressure um, again the wheel alignment what I just did totally up on to you guys uh, tire pressure again up to you guys but this is what I would do um, I I like to have mine anywhere from about 30 to 45 pounds so we we are just gonna do let's say thirty eight. Now the wheel offset is how much it sticks out. So right now they are all the way in towards the center of the car. Um, the rear tire pressure, I do anywhere from five to about fifteen. So we're just gonna go ahead and put it at ten. And then all the way to the left for the offset. Now, 
after you do all that make sure down here at the very bottom of this menu you click on apply now watch how the car changes the rear height kind of changed a little bit the front wheels are now not pigeon toed but the tops are angled out but you have the most height doing this right here so that's a little tip for you guys <clears throat> so that's pretty much the basics on building a car you guys um, like I said uh, some cars are different than others um, if you guys have any questions on how to do this process after watching videos if you uh, th this video if you guys have any questions at all comments concerns feel free to leave a comment below um, I am more than willing to help anybody uh, mess with their tunes, uh, their their own setups, but um, I do require you to send them on Discord. So I'm also going to show you guys how to do that right now. So we have Discord pulled up here. This is my Discord. As you see, link to it is in the description. And how to send cars is you want to go up here to the very top on the left side to uh, direct messages and say the host that you want to send it to. You type in their name up here to find or start a conversation. You type their name in or uh, you go to their the server where they're hosting. And if they posted somewhere, like for example, um, like this here, you know, they're saying that they're running, you know, whatever, uh, whatever rules, this and that. You go to their name, right click on it, and you can normally message somebody by, you know, just like that, message. Click on message, and their name will come up here. Now, how to send cars is you go down here to where you type the message, click on this plus upload a file it'll bring up your file explorer and you click on the car that, that you want to send uh, but but before we do that we need to save the vehicle so save and then send so how you save it you go up here to save and load name it whatever you want We'll just call this test POS Vic. We all know what POS stands for. Then you hit save. Boom, it's saved. Now. Okay, now find the message or the person that you want to send the car to. Click the plus, go to upload a file. And then we see the car that we just named test POS Vic. Click on it, click on open, and it puts the car in the message, hit enter, boom. You just sent your car to the host on Discord. That's that's all you do. Same way with skins. You go to the mod folder, find the skin that you want to send, click open, boom. Just like that. So that's pretty much the basics on how to build cars in RDP. Um, sorry, it took almost an hour to explain it, but there's a lot. There really is. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns on this whole process, feel free to reach out to me. I will help you with your own builds. Um, I will even build you cars, but I'm not going to do it for free. I'll just be completely honest with you guys. I'm not, I won't do it for free. Um, especially if you want a competitive car. So there's that. So thanks to everybody for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out the description where I have links to all kinds of different Patreons, my Twitch channel, that kind of thing. So I appreciate you guys' support, and we'll see you later.